Welcome back, folks. Now, we've been talking about ritual today. We've been talking about Beltane and some of the things that went on during the crowning of the May Queen and the Beltane festivals this year, and how we've seen a number of very significant events being played out around the world, especially in the three power centres, that can all be directly related to the rituals of Beltane. And folks, when you see one of these events, then it could be a coincidence. When you see two, it becomes amazing. And when you see three, it starts to suggest that maybe it's not a coincidence at all, maybe it's planned. But when you see the series of intertwining events as I listed them for you in the first half of the program, there can really be no doubt that this is being played out and that the people that are playing it out know very much what they're doing. Now, folks, they will tell you that I'm crazy for even thinking about these rituals. If you start talking about them, they'll tell you that you're living in fairyland and that you have an overactive imagination. And yet, you see before you all of these rituals. And this indicates that though these people tell you that this is all fantasy and kid stuff, it becomes very obvious that they themselves believe very much in what they are doing. And this becomes obvious simply due to the amount of trouble they go to to enact these rituals at these particular times. I mean, these, these events could fall on any date, folks, but they always fall on these same ritualistic dates. And if you look at the event, what you see is the same ritual. It happens all the time. So there's no way that any of these events can be construed as simply interesting coincidences, because they're not. They're very, very planned, and there's a reason for it. And it's the same reason that everybody within this society is surrounded by corporate logos and esoteric symbolism, five-pointed stars, and all of the things that they plaster on billboards all around the place and that is to keep people locked into the matrix. See, all of these things are energy rituals, folks, and as I've said to you so very often, we have a very large number of higher senses, and we use these senses in ways that we don't understand. Folks, it's really as if everybody's walking around with lobotomies. We're all simply zombies walking around, and we are completely unaware of our surroundings. And in fact, we've had our DNA and our pineal gland and our active centers within the body reduced to a state where we simply cannot even perceive the world around us. We simply don't have the active senses that are needed to decode the data. So we can't even perceive the information around us. It's as if you are a fish and you are swimming in a tank and you are unaware that there is anything outside of the tank. Or you're walking in the dark holding a flashlight and all you know is real is that that you can see with the flashlight. And for you, that's your entire reality. You're walking through a landscape in a glass tube and all you can perceive is what is inside the tube and you are unaware that anything else exists outside of that. And this is almost exactly what's happening, folks, because... There is an awful lot going on outside visible light that we simply don't have the means of decoding. We don't have the senses active that deal with this information. And this is a lot of what these rituals are about. It's to keep us locked into this false paradigm. You see, by simply giving these things our attention, what we do is we confirm the matrix, we confirm the hologram. And as I've often said, we interact with these rituals and these symbols and sigils in ways that we can't perceive, using senses that we don't know we have. The trick is becoming aware that this is what's going on, being aware that you are doing this, and being aware that you are speaking higher languages all the time. And the most common of these higher languages, one that you are actually half aware of, is the language of feeling and emotion, the language of the heart, the language of electromagnetism, that you speak to the surrounding field all the time via your emotional state. 
And this is extremely important, folks, that you are aware of this language because emotion is something within humanity that has never been able to be suppressed. And this is because it can't be suppressed completely like our other higher senses because emotion is needed to create the matrix. It's emotion and attention that creates the reality that we find ourselves in. It's where our attention goes and the emotional state we are in when it goes there. That's why I say it's not about not looking at what's wrong with the world. It's about looking at it in the right way, from the right energetic state. Most people say where attention goes, energy flows. And that's true to a certain degree. But it also very much depends on the emotional state as to how you are actually interacting with whatever it is you are giving your attention to. And so emotions are needed to create this reality, and they've never been able to be suppressed. All that can happen is it can be dulled. But it's always there. And if you become aware of your body, and if you become aware of the energy field around you, then you will notice that your Emotions generate a physical feeling in your body and they can generate a noticeable electrical field in a room. If you're a really happy, bubbly person, when someone walks into that room, they instantly feel lighter, they feel happier, they feel the energy that you are giving off. If you are in a very angry state or a very distressed state, then people will also feel that. Sometimes you'll walk into a room where people have just had an argument and you'll think, wow, you can cut the air with a knife in here. The feeling is tangible. And it's the same for any emotion. So once you become aware of this and you become aware that you are physically manifesting change within your body through your emotion, and then you realize that you are also manifesting energetic change around you simply by the emotional state you're in, you can begin to notice different aspects of reality. You can begin to notice how reality changes when you are in a state of fear as opposed to what it's like when you're in a state of love. And you can start to become aware of the emotional state that you're in. And when you can begin to focus more on a vibration and a frequency of love, you find that you can open up your DNA. You can start to unlock higher senses. You can start to read energy in the room. And essentially you'll find that your entire life changes. And you can really start to do this and start to move yourself into this love vibration and away from the fear vibration simply by understanding what reality is. By understanding how the universe works, understanding how matter binds together, understanding that it is an electrical universe. Reality is just this substance connected by water and it's the water that holds the memory of your experience and leaves it imprinted on earth you take that experience with you energetically when you leave and that becomes part of the field your physical experiences become part of the material field through the water your energetic experiences go back to the energy and become part of the energy that people draw into themselves to create new realities and when you can look at this understanding, it becomes very difficult to fear anything because you start understanding what reality is and you start to realize that reality itself is quite literally up for grabs because we could, by our collective manifestation and our collective consciousness, change this reality into whatever we want it to be. If we start giving to people, we start being loving with people and helping people and feeling connected to people. When we pass from this existence, that information is encoded into the water that was our bodies and it goes back to the vast pool of water from which everything is created. The energy that we collected from the experience, the empathy and the compassion that we gained during our life and what we gave to others and the pleasure and love that we received back in return, this joyous, wondrous, giving energy also goes back to the energy field and replenishes the field. And then people have that to draw into themselves to create their reality. 
So the more we put into the field, both physically through the water and energetically via our emotions, the more we change reality. And water has memory, folks. As I said before, water has memory. Anything you do around water, anything water witnesses, it keeps a record of. And water is in everything. There's been the research of people such as Victor Schorberger, and actually there's a wonderful film out, folks, if you can find it. It's called Water, the Great Mystery. I highly recommend that you watch it. It's a fantastic film. And it does give you an extremely good overview of the properties of water. And folks, these languages that we speak, these higher senses that I keep mentioning, this is an ongoing process. We are speaking these languages. We are using these higher senses all the time. It's just that we don't realize we're doing it. But the language of feeling and emotion, this is something that you can realize you are speaking. The language of intuition, the language of electromagnetism. If you stop and think about it, you will find this language and you will learn how to speak it. All you have to do is look within and start to feel your surroundings rather than look or touch or taste your surroundings. Start to feel them energetically. Start to listen to what your emotions tell you. Start to listen to what your intuition tells you. Start to feel the energy in a room or feel the energy in a forest or in a beach or at a party or wherever you happen to be. Feel the energy. Be aware of the moment. Be aware of the moment you are in right now and everything about that moment. And be aware of your inner emotions, folks. Be aware of your inner actions. Because one of the most important things that most people overlook is true intention. What is your intention in everything that you do? When you help someone, what is your true intention? Are you truly intending to help that person or are you doing it for self-gain? Are you doing it because you want someone to think you're cool? Are you doing it because you wish to make a charitable statement? Or are you really doing it because it's a gift from the heart to help another soul? When you conduct a business transaction with someone, are you intending to profit as much as possible at their expense? Are you intending to serve only yourself, or are you intending to serve the creation? I know it's very hard for people to look at things in that way in this cutthroat world that we live in. Everybody is out to make a dollar. Everybody is out to take advantage of somebody else. And there are very few people who are prepared to give simply because it's the right thing to do. There are very few people who are willing to serve the creation. But when you do, if you can let your guard down and do it genuinely, you will find your life changes. But again, don't just give of yourself to others. You must always give to yourself as well, because you are part of the creation. It's got to be a balance. It's not like you should go out there and simply allow yourself to be taken advantage of. But you should always treat people as yourself and always work to serve the creation. As I said, it can be a difficult concept for people to get their minds around, but you'll find that when you can do that, your life will change. And eventually, fear will become a thing of the past. Most of our fear in this life is fear of not having enough paper because we believe that may lead to death. Fear of breaking rules, because we believe that may lead to death. Fear of incarceration, fear of terrorism, fear, fear, fear. Everything is designed to keep you in this state. But within the structure of society, it usually comes back to paper. Fear of not having enough paper, because without paper, you have no security. It's a fear of shortage, a fear of being without, a fear of not having a roof and a home and all the stuff that we perceive paper to be able to provide for us. 